let's get into it. We grounded ourselves. We come into the space. We know that we're spanning from the West Coast to the East Coast, South and North all around. So what are we going to be talking about today? My goal is to prepare you for labor in the best way I can in two hours. So I'm going to stick closely to self-advocacy and being informed about your decisions, how you advocate for yourself in your birthing place, as well as what to put in your bag. That's a question that always comes up. What do I need to bring with me? We'll also cover the stages of labor and what stages are going to take place at home. How do you cope with these? And when do you actually go to the doctor? When is it time to go to your medical provider of the birth center? When is it time to call your doula? We'll also be talking about some of the interventions and augmentations that may occur as we create your birth plan. You have a certain vision in mind, but as you know, things can change in any moment in life. Clearly, look at us now, all home, sheltering in place. And in labor, there's no different. Things can change and you want to be prepared to know what may be coming your way. Um, we'll close out with some questions. I have resources for those of us here in the Bay Area and also a little bit of a to-do list because we want to make sure that you don't just leave here and say, oh, that was a good class, but that you have some tangible takeaways that you can practice and feel more prepared as we go through this journey. So, I know I we in the medical, you know, those of us who support people in the medical world, we love to use this BRAIN, 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 use your BRAIN. It is an acronym that helps you receive information and make informed decisions in the medical setting. And I want to say now that this can be used in labor, this can be used prenatally, postpartum, or any time that you're in a medical setting, whether you're going to pediatrician appointments or getting checkup on yourself. It doesn't have to be specifically for labor. And the key is this is giving you the information you need in order to weigh your options and make a decision that is right for you. Especially in labor and in pregnancy, this is a natural part of the um, human reproductive cycle. There, this is how we all got here. It's not a disease, it's not a condition, it's just a natural part of the life cycle. And so we want to make sure that you have autonomy over your body, that you have a decision in the way that things are going and the way that your care is being offered to you. And one way to do this is to definitely use this BRAIN um, acronym. So B stands for benefits. You want to ask, what are the benefits of this particular intervision or procedure? So let's use something very simple like having an IV. A lot of people will be offered an IV um, when they go into the hospital. What are the benefits of having an IV? That's a simple question to ask before you um, are given the HEP lock or the um, intravenous um, lock that they put on in order to make sure that you can get different um, fluids or medications. And that's one benefit is that they don't have to keep on sticking you and going in and out. So it makes it easy access. But there's also the question about what are the risks? Are there any risks? And I can say that there's always a risk. There's nothing is risk-free in this world. If you're walking down the stairs, there's a risk that you could fall, right? And so we want to weigh those risks and ask specifically about um, what that risk is. Is it a tiny risk? Is it large? Is it one in 10 or is it one in a million? And then you're able to weigh um, how you want to engage with that risk. Another great question to ask is, are there any possible alternatives to this proposed intervention and procedure? Meaning, is there something else we can try besides what you're offering right now? And oftentimes there are many alternatives and many um, different ways to go about to get the same solution. You are in control of your body and you are able to say, I want to try this particular way. If it's not an emergency, then I want to try some alternatives. Um, these may not be offered to you. And so this may seem like a simple thing, like, of course, I want to know if it's beneficial or if it's risky or what's happening. But sometimes when we're in a medical situation, we just go with what is suggested, not even knowing that there's some alternatives to what um, we are being um, offered. So you want to ask, what are the alternatives? And then the most important for me, and I, I say this because I feel that each person is really um, 
in command and in demand and in an understanding with their own body. So the question is, what is your intuition telling you? When you are being offered, for instance, this IV, is your intuition telling you, yeah, I may not feel like I want to drink, so I might need some IV in order to keep my myself hydrated. Um, is your intuition telling you that this labor is moving quickly and I don't, I don't want to sit here and help, you know, it's always hard for me to get an IV in and if it's not necessary, I don't want to do it. The key is you are able to make that choice and your intuition is the best guide throughout this entire process. Your intuition is going to be what shows up to tell you when it's time to push. Your intuition is going to be what you're leaning on to be able to tell those different contractions from the ones that are actually doing the work. So never silence your intuition. The other one is the N for need time. Sometimes we feel rushed in our decision making and it doesn't allow us the space that we need in order to make an informed decision. So if it isn't an emergency, you can always let your provider know that you want some time to discuss the proposed intervention or the procedure so that you can make a decision. And I find this very helpful as a doula. When I'm working with clients, um, we can be in the moment and them not have quite an understanding and they feel like they need to be in the moment right now making a decision. But just to have that space to say, can I have five minutes to think about this? Can I have five minutes to discuss this with my birth um, support person or my doula? And you're able to go through what the benefits and risks were that you were just told about and how you're really feeling about it. And that way, we know you're able to make a better decision that may not necessarily mean better in terms of like your medical practice, but better in terms of you feel like this is what is right for you. When you are on board with your care, it's much more um, relaxing, you, the tension, all of that is at ease because you have an understanding of what's going on. And so I wanna encourage everyone to use your brain. When my daughter was in um, preschool, we would do this song called Kiss Your Brain, right? Because your brain is so important. So I want you all to have a close relationship with this brain acronym. I want you to kiss this brain. I want you to have this in your innermost thoughts at all times to know that whenever you're advocating, you can do benefits, risks, alternatives, follow your intuition and take the time that is needed. This is the best way for you to advocate for yourself. Another way is to ensure that your birth support person and everyone on your team knows what your game plan is. Um, the birth room, the labor room is not the place for opposition. It's not the place to convince someone that, you know, this is what I want. And I know you didn't do it that way, but I feel like I want to have it this way. It is your process. So when you're advocating, make sure you have someone who's on your team, who's there to support you and give you the respect and the honor and the dignity that you need in this whole labor process. Does anybody have any questions about that before we move on? If you can, you can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand or put a thumbs up and I can unmute you because I want to make sure everyone is on the same page here. All right. 